everyone. Welcome back to the Energy Blueprint Podcast. With me now is Catherine Arnston, who I am very excited to interview. I've been meaning to interview her for several years now. She is the founder of a company called Energy Bits, and her mission is to help the world be healthier naturally with Mother Nature's oldest and original food, which is algae. She graduated with an MBA from Ivy School of Business and a health coach certificate from Institute of Integrative Nutrition. Her career spans 33 years, during which she's been an international attache for the Canadian and British governments, publisher of an international magazine, and founder of three startups. She founded the Algae Tablet Company, Energy Bits, in Boston, Massachusetts, after her younger sister in Canada was diagnosed with breast cancer and advised by her oncologist that an alkaline diet would help her heal. Uh, she then helped her sister research alkaline foods, and the process led her to discover the healing properties of plant-based nutrition. This ultimately led her to algae, the most nutrient-dense alkaline plant in the world, with vast medicinal properties unknown, mostly unknown, outside of Asia. She realized algae could have a powerful impact on the world if it was only better understood, and she has devoted her life ever since then to researching algae and educating consumers athletes, wellness, spa, fitness, and beauty professionals about its therapeutic, sustainable benefits. She is now considered one of the country's leading experts on algae nutrition, a sought after speaker at wellness conferences, and a frequent guest on podcasts and television. So welcome to the show, Catherine. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me, Ari. <laughs> I've been listening to your podcasts and reading your materials and books for years. So um, this is a dream come true. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, it's a great connection to have on, on for both of us. Yeah. So let's talk about how, well, first of all, what happened with your sister? You know, I read well, a little bit in your yes. bio there. Yeah, about, yeah. good you know, news. Uh, she's been cancer free for 11 years. We celebrate every year. Um, so her life changed and so did mine, um, which is also an interesting lesson about, you know, there's always a silver lining if you look for it. Um, but, you know, it was, a, it was a scare, as it always is when you get a diagnosis of any kind, but particularly cancer. So um, anyways, it all, it all seemed to work out, but it was, it was a rough going for a while, but uh, we both hung in there and um, happy ending for both of us. <laughs> nice. Wonderful. So let's talk about algae. Yeah. What, what are some of my favorite the, topic? <laughs> so what, what are some of the, the sort of, I guess we could start with sort of a list of benefits. What is this good for? And is there any science behind it? And I know yeah. we're going to talk about that science, but for people who are maybe listening to this and they've heard of spirulina, they've heard of chlorella, they've heard them touted as, you know, these superfoods. But maybe they're, they're they've they've thought, oh, you know, that's a bunch of woo woo, you know, hippy dippy nonsense. Um, you know, I doubt there's any real science to show that these things have actual benefit. Yeah. So what, what's sort of the overarching big picture sure. takeaway about it? Yeah. Is it okay if I explain what algae is, so we of can, you know, have a context to understand the benefits? And um, just laughing about the woo woo because uh, you, the NASA feeds this to the astronauts because it's the most nutrient dense efficient nutrition in the world. So uh, there's nothing woo woo about NASA. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so let's go back, uh, back in time, as they say, um, on our time machine to when the earth was first formed and there was nothing on it except gas and water. And uh, for, I have no idea why, but algae started growing. So algae is the original life on earth. They've got fossils proving that spirulina was the first life on earth three and a half billion years ago. And it's still here. It, made its way through a couple of ice ages and dinosaur periods, and uh, it's going to probably outlive all of us. And I only point that out because algae is everywhere. Um, so even though people know a little bit maybe about spirulina and chlorella, you need to understand that there's a much bigger universe of algae out there. Um, and in fact, there's two main categories of algae. I, I try to help people understand this. There's one called macro 
macroalgae. And what we're talking about today is microalgae, but let me explain what macroalgae is first so you have the proper context. It's also known as seaweed, dulse, kelp. Um, it's basically that big stringy stuff that washes up on shore. And it has some great nutritional value because it has a lot of fiber um, and it has a lot of iodine because it comes from the ocean. In fact, there's a kelp noodle company out of San Diego whose products I use um, yeah, for that reason. But it's virtually no nutrition, just great fiber, great iodine. Then there's microalgae, which is called microalgae because it's microscopic in size, something like a million of uh, cells of microalgae could fit on the head of a pin. That's how tiny it is. And microalgae, unlike its brother macroalgae, which is only in the oceans, microalgae is everywhere. It's in the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the soil, your swimming pool, your aquarium. Uh, yes, on the beach too, but it's absolutely everywhere. And there are tens of thousands of strains of microalgae. There's so many that we don't even know 99% of them. Now, two of the most common strains of microalgae are blue-green algae and green algae. And one strain of blue-green algae is spirulina, and one strain of green algae is chlorella. And I point this out and I stress this because some people will go to the internet and they'll you know, Google blue-green algae and they'll see something about a blue-green toxic algae bloom in the beaches of blah, blah, blah. And then they'll panic and think, well, I can't use spirulina. No, 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 no. That's that, as I said, there's tens of thousands of strains of blue-green algae. The one we're gonna talk about, which is spirulina and the other one is chlorella, are harvested as food crops. They are not from the ocean. Algae is probably the only food I can think of, the only crop I can think of that is it's better when it's harvested instead of raw, um, out in the wild. And I'm gonna show you a picture. This is a picture of a, a spirulina farm. And I, I point this out because also a lot of people think that um, algae, when you see it in, in our, on our website or anywhere, they're, they're you know, often in little tablets or, or powder, they think it's a, um, a supplement and it's not a supplement. Supplements are made from extracts with high heat in factories. And algae is grown as a vegetable, no different than kale or broccoli. Um, and we don't use high heat when we dry it. So it's a raw food. Um, it's also vegan and ketogenic. So, so it's just a dried vegetable, <laughs> except it's got a thousand times more nutrition than any other vegetable. So I just wanna put that in context that it's everywhere. And the two that we're talking about are the two that are harvested as food. Uh, in fact, it's a multi-billion, that's with a B, multi-billion dollar agricultural crop in Asia. Uh, in Japan, they don't leave their house without taking chlorella. Uh, you know, we all take supplements and everything. They don't take supplements in Asia. They only take chlorella algae, and you're going to find out why, because it's it's a, a wellness algae. It builds your immune system, uh, pulls out toxins, and, and improves your longevity. But let's, let's talk about spirulina first, because it's the one most people know about, and it was the first one here. Um, now, uh, as I mentioned, it's a blue-green algae, and spirulina has been known for years, decades, for being an energizing, nourishing algae. And the reason for that is that it has the highest concentration of protein in the world. It has 18 of the 20 amino acids, including all the ones that your body can't make. So it's a complete protein. And this is pretty important because uh, a lot of people who are maybe vegan or vegetarian are not eating meat. And so um, they're often having to mix things like beans and rice to get complete protein. Algae is a complete protein, which is actually in contrast to collagen powder, which has become quite popular. It's an incomplete protein because it's missing the tryptophan. So anyways, I point that out because not only does spirulina have the highest protein in the world, uh, all of which are in uh, single amino acids. It gets into your bloodstream very quickly because, interestingly, spirulina is actually a bacteria. It has no cellulose wall or nucleus. The reason why that's important is that it's there's nothing for your body to break down to get access to all the nutrients in it, including those rich aminos. Spirulina is also loaded with B vitamins, which are the uh, what convert the glucose and in this case amino acids into energy. Um, when we first started, we were actually uh, became a, a sports nutrition product because the runners, the triathletes, the marathon, the Olympic athletes found out that how much not only physical energy they got, but the focus. It helps with your mental focus, and they weren't expecting that, um, and that it didn't upset their stomach like all the other you know sports products did, like. Gator, sorry, I shouldn't mention any names, but the things that are sugar and carb based because 
they cause cramping and diarrhea when you're in the midst of a sport. So anyways, back to spirulina, high in protein, high in B vitamins, loaded with ion, ion, iron, which carries oxygen in your blood. And that what, that's, um, also gives you energy, both mentally and physically. It has a lot of essential fatty acids, uh, a little bit of omega-3, but uh, a lot of something called GLA, which is gamma linoleic acid, which behaves like an omega-3, because in our case, at least in our algae, it does, because it's not processed with heat. Now, um, so it reduces inflammation just as well as omega-3 does. Uh, and the only other place that has more GLA than spirulina is mother's breast milk. And the reason why there's so much of it in mother's breast milk is because it's critical for your, your brain health and your brain development. Of course, the baby's brain doubles and triples in size in the first couple of years. So that and the fact there's boron, which uh, helps with synapses and coordination and mental thought. And it's a vasodilator, which opens up your blood vessels. It's got 40 vitamins and minerals, all of the electrolytes. So again, very nourishing, fills almost all nutritional gaps. Uh, and because of that high protein, it um, gives you, and the B vitamins gives you energy mentally and physically. Uh, a lot of people use it for intermittent fasting because it's ketogenic. There are zero carbs um, uh, and, or even weight loss or, or meal replacement, uh, certainly before any kind of workout. Um, that's why we recommend the spirulina in the morning or the afternoon or before a workout because it satisfies your hunger. It gives you instant energy, easy to digest. It's safe for babies, newborns, grandparents, pets, uh, there isn't one con negative outcome uh, uh, documented about spirulina in the 80 years that has been carefully documented. And by the way, and I know this was your opening question about the science, there's virtually 100,000 studies on the two algae, spirulina and chlorella, about 60,000 on spirulina and all of its health benefits. Um, that's a big number. I mean, you know, that's not five or 50 or 500 or 5,000. That's a big number, like 50 or 60,000 is, is almost, it makes the, you realize that the, the science uh, makes the benefits that we're re you know, referring to today almost irrefutable. The only problem is the scientists like to talk to other scientists and um, the science has not made its way out into the public. and. Um, that's what I do very well. And it's all, I used to regret, it took me so long to get the company going because I don't have a science background. I, I'm pretty much self-taught, um, but you know, I feel like I've got a PhD in algae because I'm so determined to help people understand why this stuff works so well. Um, so the fact that I don't have a science background has allowed me to back into the science, which I love reading, and then I reinterpret it in a way that makes it easy for the average person to understand because uh, not everybody's going to be as passionate about digging into the science as I am. But yeah. uh, spirulina could be an uh, easy addition to every single person's diet without any effort. And I'm going to show you something. These are the little, we sell ours in little tablets and you can find them in other places too. The dark one, darker one is, is spirulina because it has two pigments in it, chlorophyll and a blue one called phycocyanin. And the other one is chlorella, which is just uh, has just the chlorophyll. So you can see the two, the differences in the two of them. But each one of these tablets has so much nutrition in it, look how tiny they are, that it has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. And I got into algae because as I, after I graduated from the Institute of Int Integrative Nutrition, and I, I taught nutrition for a year, and I trying to get people to eat more vegetables. And I realized I wasn't telling them anything that they didn't already know. Our mothers have been telling us to eat our veggies since we were kids, right? Um, <laughs> But what I found out, it was just too much work for people. They're so busy. Vegetables weigh a lot to carry home. The kids wouldn't eat them. Their husbands wouldn't eat them. And it was just too much work. It took too long to cook, to clean, to eat. So, you know, fast forward to algae. Each one of these tablets, I have a quote from NASA that says algae has a thousand times more nutrition than any other fruit or vegetable, one to a thousand. So each one of these tablets has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables, except no work. Yeah. One and done. You know, most people swallow them, but I, I like to chew them. <laughs> so I am very, very excited to be able to help people get the nutrition that they need without any work. At least the green nutrition. Well, it's more than green nutrition. It's protein. And I was recently on um, uh, Dr. Stephen Gundry's uh, podcast. And um, he's, a, he, you know, he was, he's been very supportive of algae for a while as well, because he, like me, found out that there's no lectins or oxalates in algae because it's not technically a plant. It's not a land-based plant. So, and there's virtually no fiber. There's no fiber in spirulina and only a small amount in chlorella. 
So a lot of people have problems with fiber. A lot of people have problems with lectins and oxalates. You know, problem solved. Um, Algae is your, your go-to. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this. Uh, personally, both spirulina and chlorella, I'm extremely impressed with the research as you are. Uh, enough so that I put it put put them both into my formula, Energy Essentials and Superfoods, and I have nice. a sizable dose of both of those nice. uh, in there. But I also use your products, Energy Bits and Recovery Bits, in addition to that. Nice. Because I like my my dosage to be somewhere around the five grams yeah. mark for each of those, uh, for both spirulina and and chlorella, and uh, you know I have about one and a half or two grams, which is actually a, a good sized dose uh, in of, of both of those compounds in my formula. But so I'm taking both of them and I, I because I'm so impressed with the research. Yeah. Now yeah. you mentioned one of the compounds, the blue pigment in spirulina, which is my personal favorite phytochemical. And I think it's probably, I think there's a, a good case for that to be arguably the most healthful, beneficial uh, phytochemical known to man. So let's talk about, first of all, I'm curious if you agree with me. Oh, to, sure. Do. <laughs> do you, uh, we, we're going to get a chance to talk about chlorella later, right? Yes, most definitely. Okay. Okay. So, um, but let's talk about phycocyanin first. Yeah. What, yeah. what some of the research has shown as far as the benefits of that and the benefits of spirulina more broadly. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, uh, and it's um, and here's the thing: um, even with sixty thousand studies on spirulina, there's still so much yet to learn. And you know, one of the reasons I want to be successful is that you know that we could hopefully fund some of that research because. Um, there's other pigments in there. Of course, there's beta carotene. It has the highest beta carotene, um, but we're still learning what these things do. So let's let's look at that gorgeous blue phycocyanin. First of all, it's a water-based pigment, and I mention that because when we get to talk about chlorella, I'll point out the benefits of the fact that chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. So they do completely different things in your body, but. One of the amazing features of phycocyanin is it has what's called anti-angiogenesis properties. That's a mouthful, I know, but what that means is that it, it intercepts, um, well, let me back up, when, when tumors and, and cancers, well, they basically hijack your blood vessels to, and reroute them to feed the cancer cells uh, to keep them growing. And phycocyanin, for whatever reason, has the, and that's called angiogenesis when that happens. Uh, phycocyanin has the ability to prevent that, to intercept that. And I didn't even know that until about five years ago. And there, there's a, an association, a very large association right here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, called the Angiogenesis Society. It's angiogen.org. And they were having their global conference. And they called us and they said, you know, did you know that your spirulina uh, can prevent cancer by this angiogenesis, uh, anti-angiogenesis process. And I said, no, and they invited us to come to their conference for free um, because they felt so you know, strongly about it. And this is an association that's funded by Bill Gates and uh, Bill Clinton and all the bills. So pretty powerful stuff. So that's number one. Everybody um, with the name Bill gathers together. To yeah, fund. yeah, all the bills. <laughs> In fact, the, including the dollar bills. <laughs> the bills bring their bills. <laughs> Um, another pretty powerful one, and again, you know, I, I, I point out that I'm not a, I'm not a medical professional, and anything I say is not to be construed as medical advice. Um, I only reference the science that I have read. So that being said, the science shows, and we have examples of the sources for this on our website, that um, the again, phycocyanin has this remarkable ability to intercept the COVID virus. So it cannot enter your blood vessels. And the way it does that, we've all seen pictures of the COVID virus with those little prongs that stick out. And those prongs attach to uh, your cells. And the way it enters your body is through something called an ACE2 receptor cell. And most of those are in your nose, your throat, your lungs. Um, and so this phycocyanin sits on top of the ACE2 receptor cell. It's sort of like a shield. <laughs> it's like a super, super uh, hero. And it prevents that prong from the COVID virus from attaching. So it can't get into your cell and it just slides through. So, um, and, and so what's happened is that the University of Pittsburgh uh, pharmacology department has actually developed a nose spray based on this 
that is being used as a vaccine for, for COVID. Uh, so pretty impressive stuff. And of course, it's a, a nose spray because that's where so many of your ACE2 receptor cells are. So, so they're, they're, they're using, first of all, I'm glad you brought this up. I was going to ask you about the, if you knew about the research uh, yeah. of spirulina and COVID, I'm glad you do. And um, so you're saying, I, I, I didn't know about this nasal spray that you're talking yeah. about. So I you're saying they're you using this. what? They're using phycocyanin in the nasal well, spray? Well, they're using algae and I have to believe that it's got the phycocyanin and I, I, have, I haven't read the actual papers, um, but that's one of maybe a dozen different um, uh, scientific uh, you know, groups that are pursuing algae as a, as a vaccine. They've, uh, you know, I, I grew up in Canada and there's the University of Western Ontario where I did my MBA. They have a, even a COVID test that's based on algae, but uh, Israel, Italy, um, lots in Asia, they have developed lots of vaccines all based on algae. Um, and it, you know, I, again, I don't have all of the science. Some of it's referenced on our website. If we have a whole section, a whole drop down. If you go to energybits.com up at the top, it'll say science about COVID. And uh, I've, there's at least 10 or 12 references on the different science. We explain what COVID is and how it enters your body. Uh, and I, we can go deeper into why algae can help not only protect you, but can also um, help you if you do have it for various metabolic activities that occur. And it's fascinating, it's so fascinating. But once you understand it, you go, well, that makes sense. And that, that's the beautiful thing about truth. It just makes sense. <laughs> right. Well, there's also research showing, uh, you know, well, let me let me jump back one step for, for listeners, which is that... Uh, one of the big problems, one of the things that really kills you with COVID is not just the virus itself. It's your immune system overreacting, over yes. responding yeah, to the cytokines it and, yeah. and to the damage that the virus creates in your body. And so yeah. you get a cytokine storm and right. people with poor immune function um, in, in most cases due to poor metabolic health, poor nutrition and lifestyle habits, which is a major contributor to that. Uh, cr creates that propensity for the immune system to overreact and to get a cytokine score. One of the, the biggest uh, cytokines that's involved in that is something called TNF alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. And uh, it's a major pro-inflammatory cytokine. And there's research showing spirulina leads to profound uh, levels of reduction, 70% plus levels of reduction yeah. in TNF alpha. That's really cool. I didn't know that. Well, the other cool thing is we're talking about COVID and I wasn't going to because we're so sick of it, right? Um, <laughs> It's not just a, a lung disorder, and as you mentioned, the inflammatory reaction. It's a blood disorder. You'll find that most people who are dying die from a heart disease or heart attack. And here's what happens. The COVID virus in, in, invades your blood and it injects itself to in your hemoglobin and it kicks out the iron atom. Remember, iron is what carries oxygen in your blood. So now the iron atom is no longer in your hemoglobin. Instead, the virus is there. So as your blood is circulating, it can no longer carry oxygen uh, to your cells and to your major organs. And one of the first ones that that um, uh, gives out is your is your heart. And, but it's worse than that. So when the iron is kicked out of the hemoglobin, it doesn't disappear. It's still in your blood, but it is no longer protected in the hemoglobin. I, I, I compare hemoglobin to bubble wrap. It, you know, when, it, when the iron is in there, it's, it's you know, like bubble wrap, it's, it's carefully protected. Because if you've ever gone to a dock and you see things that are rusting, that's oxidation. And so when the iron is kicked out of the hemoglobin, it's now still in your blood vessel, but it's a rogue cell and it's causing uh, 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 oxidation wherever it goes. So it's causing damage. It's like a, you know, it's a, like a drunk at a bar. It's just like out of the way. And so even with the cytokine in, inflammatory in, inflammation, this rogue, um, um, iron atom is causing even more damage because it's no longer protected in the, um, in the hemoglobin. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. And one of the reasons I like, uh, you know, algae so much, and I don't have science about this, I will, you know, just, tell you that um, but because algae is so uh, um, is so alkaline and has so much iron in it I'm thinking that you'd think it would help restore the iron atom in the blood and also the other thing is when whether it's viruses COVID virus any virus cancer any disease is acidic and um, 
our our bodies and mother nature are so 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 intelligent the hemoglobin has a negative charge around it you know if you've ever held magnets up you know yeah you know how they repel one another well your hemoglobin is the same way it's sort of like a negative charge around it and the reason for that is so that they don't clump in your blood in your blood when they're traveling and this allows them to a be nice and round so they can carry the ox the iron atom and carry oxygen and so they don't clump mm -hmm. When the virus gets into your blood because it kicks out the iron atom and because it's acidic, it not only steals your, uh, it prevents your blood from carrying oxygen, it causes them to clump because now it's acidic. And they have found as they do any kind of, you know, um, with the cadavers of people who've died, they blood clump, clumping everywhere. And this is one of the reasons. So, so even you know, fast forward or even just eliminating this whole COVID situation, and we're going to talk about this in a minute when we switch over to chlorella. Uh, chlorophyll and your hemoglobin are virtually identical in chemical composition, and algae has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world. Chlorella has twice as much as um, spirulina because spirulina has that second. Um, blue pigment that we just talked about. And the reason, the only difference is your hemoglobin has iron in the middle and chlorophyll has um, uh, the uh, um, magnesium in the middle, but it builds your blood. They've been giving using chlorophyll f f since the, you know, BC to help people with healing properties. They even gave it to the injured during World War II if they ran out of blood transfusions because they would it builds your blood. So if nothing else, I know we're stepping, you know, getting ahead of ourselves here about the different benefits of algae, but it, it builds your blood and um, there, our food supply is so damaged, our soils are so overcropped, there's no nitrogen in, or nutrients in the soil for the plants to have in them. And this CO2 is so damaged that they're finding plants have more sugar in them now. And I have all the science references to that too. So even if you ate a room full of arugula, you wouldn't get the same amount of chlorophyll as you would probably in a single serving of the spirulina tablets. So I call it efficient nutrition. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, it's, I, I wanna mention just a little follow-up on something you were saying about lysing the red blood cells, releasing iron into the bloodstream. Uh, Cause I was just reading about that from a researcher a couple of days ago. And it's, it's worth men mentioning that it seems to be the spike protein itself, regardless of how that um, is and enters your body that is largely responsible for that effect. And- The what uh, protein, I'm sorry, the spike? The, the spike protein. The, 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 I'm trying to get the word, despite or-, or... Spike. Spike. Not yeah, S-P-I-K-E, spike. Huh. Um, so that, that protein, which is also, uh, which, can end, which happens with the live virus and is what is being programmed by our cells to produce from the inoculation, uh, contributes to that effect. Interesting. And, and the, uh, the, the increase in iron, of free iron in the bloodstream, uh, contributes to a wide variety of problems. It's linked oh, yeah. with uh, increased, increased um, viral activity. So it basically it kind of feeds into infections and in people that have uh, chronic or latent infections, for example, Epstein-Barr virus, uh, or uh, shingles and things like that. This is, yeah. this is likely the mechanism behind the reactivation of mm -hmm. a lot of these uh, infections that people were reporting either from the infection or the inoculation. Wow. wow. Uh, and there's also potentially a link with many cancers. And there's, yeah. this is too early to, for me to say with confidence, but there are a number of uh, oncologists coming out now talking about a shocking increase in the incidence of cancer. Wow. Uh, so there are some very concerning uh, lines of evidence emerging around that specific mechanism of lysing red blood cells and leading to the release of uh, iron yeah. into the bloodstream. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been met, I've been telling people about it for over a year, and so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, rather than get people worried, you know, my approach is always to you know just um, say you know take a deep breath, lift the hood up, try to understand what the dynamic is that's occurring, and um, and be open to. Um, so, you know, some of these uh, interceptive, you know, nutritional intercepts that could, you know, either prevent or correct the situation without drugs or surgery. So, yes. um, and that's why I love algae so much and lots of other things like red light therapy, 
there's a lot of healing things that have been used around the world for so long and and, and we're just learning about them here in north america so uh, yes, and, I, and i probably a good point for me to say that to, to everybody algae isn't new it just may new be new to you but it has been used for centuries um and as i mentioned earlier for 75 years it's been a multi-billion dollar industry in asia so um it, it's just like you know years ago we didn't know about kiwa or chia or matcha or cbd or collagen or uh and these things have been around again for centuries in in other countries you know mushrooms it was just we just need to be educated about these other alternatives. Ironically, I don't consider them alternative. I consider them original. <laughs> yes. Well, it didn't. It, yeah, I think it is even longer than centuries in the case of spirulina, if yeah. even millennia, because uh, I think that was it the Mayans or the Aztecs didn't, yeah. didn't they also consume it? Yeah, as well? absolutely. In fact, an interesting story about that is uh, when the Spanish invaded Mexico, um, they drained what they thought were swamps because they thought the, these quote swamps were causing, um, you know, a lot of uh, mess and whatever. And it turns out they were growing algae in those swamps. And wow. Um, they brought all of this European food habits to the Spanish and which were, you know, sugar and things that caused them all sorts of illness. And it was a disaster. Um, and actually, actually, even the, you know, the Egyptians uh, in BC, they used to wrap themselves in algae for, you know, healing properties. So it has been around for a very long time. And it was discovered by a Dutch scientist in the late 1800s. Um, for having the highest protein in the world. And then the Germans in the early 1900s found it was the best edible protein in the world. Um, and I, you know, there's an interesting story about why it's all in Asia. And the reason why people here don't know about it is because we just don't grow it here. You yeah. know, I, I remind people that, you know, I'm, can I'm Canadian. So where I grew up in, for a while, I was in, West, in British Columbia, you would see trucks driving by with logs on the way to to mills to be made into paper or on the east coast in the midwest you would see trucks driving by with bales of hay on the way to be made into something um and or here in boston we have dunkin donuts sadly uh, and we see trucks with their donuts driving all over the place but nowhere do you ever see trucks driving by with algae on it mm -hmm. but in asia they do it's as normal in asia as the dunkin donuts trucks are here <laughs> so um and it, on that note the in 2019 the united states white house and the senate passed the first algae agricultural act because they have realized that algae is the most eco-friendly sustainable nutrient dense food in the world and virtually none of it is grown here there is a small amount in hawaii but there's virtually none in um main uh, um, uh, united states a very small small percentage so gotcha. my hope is one day to have my own algae farm and mm -hmm. uh that's that's the plan anyways <laughs> nice nice excellent um also kind of a little bit of a childhood dream of mine related to that i always i was very into coral reef aquariums when i was young and i yeah. always dreamed of having my own aquaculture farm nice. and nice. Uh, and now that i'm into spirulina and chlorella so much you know, it's closer. Also, yeah, yeah it's, it's similar dreams yeah so yeah. um are there any other immune health benefits that are you know not specific to covid but any other things you know or relevant research we're yeah. talking about as far as spirulina and immune health um no sorry I have a little chart here. Well, um, if we're going to talk about the immune system, I thought, I, you know, I know your community is pretty well informed, but like, you know, there may be people that don't really re understand what the immune system is. So I'll give you a, like a, you know, a little quick summary. So the, your immune system is your, um, uh, your defense mechanism for your health. And I, um, and there, there's two components I've decided to, to help when I explain to people that it's two components. One you can see quite easily and one you can't. So let's talk about the one you can see. Well, that's basically your skin, um, your lungs, your mouth. And this is where pathogens would enter your body. And so they're, you know, the equivalent of your, um, uh, you know, at, at home, you have a, a, you know, an alarm system, right? So your skin and your mouth and your nose, they're the equivalent of your alarm system. They they can determine when something has entered that shouldn't be there and they set off an alarm. So that part's easy. You can point to that, see it in a medical book. The second part is the, is the part where the real action happens. And um, this is the part that most people don't understand because you can't point to it, you can't see it. Um, so when there's an invader in your house, the alarm goes off and it triggers the police 
to come and take the invader out, right? So, so the, in your body, the alarm that is triggered is in your immune system, what happens, which happens to be in your gut. Uh, 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. And what it triggers are cells, things like T cells, B cells, killer cells, macrophages. And these all uh, have been, a, they, they are created by your immune system that makes them with nutrients that if they are in your body, they make them. Um, and these cells will go after, identify whatever the pathogen is, kill it and remove it. And even better, remember it <laughs> mm -hmm. so that when it happens next time, they're much more efficient. And that's what the vaccine uh, concept is, all, is based on. But here's the thing. I remind people, you know, if you have a dinner party, the first thing you probably usually do is you go out and buy the food for the dinner party. No grocery shopping, no dinner party, right? Well, your immune system's the same way. If you do not give it the nutrients that it needs to defend you, and it wants to defend you, it's on your side, it cannot perform for you as well as it wants to. And those nutrients, or the, like the main course, include things like, I got my little chart here, vitamin A, B6, B9, B12, D, vitamin E, iron, zinc, copper, essential fatty acids, amino acids, chlorophyll, and guess what? They're all in the algae. So. Mm. If you want a very easy, effortless, uh, nutritionally dense way to provide your immune system with the nutrients it needs to defend you, it doesn't get any better than algae. Uh, it's just, you don't have to go out and buy a thousand different supplements. You don't have to go out and buy all, you know, tr start doing a, a different kind of meal plan. Um, it just takes the, the, the worry out of everything. I, I call algae your health insurance, your nutritional health insurance. Mm -hmm. You can go out and eat whatever you want as well. It's great if you eat healthy, but even if you didn't, at least you're getting the basics. Um, and because algae is so at least ours, safe and pure, third-party lab tests and doc endorsed by doctors. You can give it to your children, your newborns, your pets, your grandparents, um, and you know, it's you know it doesn't and it doesn't require any cooking, cleaner, or effort. You, if you can swallow water, you can get the nutrients you need to give your body the nutrients your immune system need to protect you. Yeah, so you don't even need to swallow water. I actually like letting the tablet sit in my mouth and yeah. just kind of dissolve over ten yeah. or fifteen minutes. Yeah, well, I, I chew mine because I, you know, I'm hardcore. <laughs> yeah, Beth, when I when I chew them, uh, sometimes I get uh, like they stick to my teeth and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So I actually, yeah. and I don't mind the taste. Some people mind the taste. Yeah. So um, I actually kind of like the taste. Yeah. And it's funny, my son, my five year old son, likes the taste as well. So he's now asking me for for tablets every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and he likes just chew on them. Yeah. Um, well, the spirulina is, is very chewy because again, it has that very high protein and the essential fatty acids. The chlorella, which we'll talk about next, which we call ours recovery bits because it helps you recover your health. It's very dry. And I'll tell you, if you haven't tried chewing chlorella, the recovery bits with um, either macadamia nuts or um, salted pistachios, you are nice. in for a treat. Nice. The best snack in the world. I eat them all day long. <laughs> Chlorella is my probably my favorite food in the world for sure. <laughs> nice. So uh, before we get there, let's talk just about energy bits. So you titled, yeah. you, you called your spirulina product energy bits. Yeah. And well, we, we thought it would be easier for people to remember and say than spirulina. And mm -hmm. it implies what the product does. Right. Um, and, you know, you, you, it's not lightning bolts of energy from the sky. I just want to you know, make sure people understand that. You may not even notice it, but what you will notice is that you just feel alert and fresh and you're not hungry. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a very subtle, steady energy because um, there's no caffeine, chemicals or sugar and there's no rush and there's no crash. It only takes, you know, you'll notice in five, if you eat them, it'll be instant. Um, if you swallow them in five or 10 minutes uh, because it gets into your bloodstream, there's literally no digestion because it gets absorbed so quickly. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just clean, clean, steady energy. And there's no upper limit. I mean, most people might take five or 10 a day. You could start with two or three tablets um, we have NHL players that put 75 in their smoothie before a game. You don't have to have that much, but if you're a, you know, an elite athlete, um, we work with a lot of, um, as I said, you know, Olympic athletes and 
um, NHL players, um, marathon and endurance athletes will take 30 before a, a race and they'll take maybe another 15 at um, one hour intervals. We've had people go 100 miles on just water and the spirulina energy bits. So um, I will point out, however, that when, you know, I started the company because my sister had breast cancer, but after a couple of years, I noticed that women weren't buying the energy, but spirulina. And so, you know, women's health is big for me and we're in breast cancer awareness month right now. So I just, you know, asked my girlfriends, I said, what do you think? Why, why do you think people, women aren't buying the spirulina? Men were, and they said, you got to make it pink and give it a cute name. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> and because... <laughs> Hey, you know, I'll do whatever it takes to get this stuff into people. Yeah. Um, so I, because spirulina does build your skin and hair because of that high protein, more than collagen, I might add, uh, high in antioxidants. I thought, okay, sure. We'll make a second brand and call it Beauty Bits. So I just want to let people know it's absolutely identical to spirulina. <laughs> it's but just to get women to buy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So someone said, well, you've got a girl spirulina and a boy spirulina, you know, pretty much. <laughs> yes. so, well, I, I have an idea for you on that. Front. Okay, okay. Um, there's another plant phytochemical compound uh, from algae, also from another type of algae, and it's called astaxanthin. Oh, yes, I know about and that. And that happens to have a pinkish color. Yes, and yes. So you could and 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 I will. That's why flamingos are pink because they that's what they eat. <laughs> that's right, and krill and salmon. Salmon, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so it this compound also bioaccumulates in our tissues and in our skin and has actually um, uh, well researched uh, aesthetic beauty benefits. Yeah. So yeah. you you could make you could infuse some astaxanthin in there. I I. I, I I'm wondering how much you're going to pay me for this marketing. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but um, you could infuse some pink-colored astaxanthin yeah, in there, and then yeah. make pink energy hey, the, the, you know, or pink beauty bits. Yeah, yeah. There's un unlimited opportunities. By the way, now that you're mentioning it, I'll point out that uh, algae has been the secret ingredient in about 50 or 60 different creams, facial creams. There's a brand called La Mer that's a tiny spoonful. It costs about $500. And it's uh, the secret ingredient, La Mer, that comes from the ocean. Yeah is algae. So, um, so I, you know, we're working a lot with the spa community and, you know, I point out that, you know, why would you put just, why would you treat yourself to your, your facial skin to this expensive cream that's got only extracts when you can ingest the entire algae tablet and give all of the benefits to all of your body. And it's the real deal, not just a piece of it. So <laughs> I know that's my secret. I'm actually 137. That's what I say. <laughs> I'm like Benjamin Button. I'm getting younger every year. <laughs> so, so let's transition into chlorella now. Okay. Um, all right. So, so talk to me about some of the science behind the benefits of chlorella. What has it been shown to be beneficial for? Yeah. Well, chlorella, I think everybody in the world uh, needs chlorella because uh, uh, just as spirulina, as I mentioned, has the highest protein in the world, chlorella has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world. And I already pointed out how the chemical composition of chlorophyll is virtually identical to your blood. So number one, um, even if you are, um, you know, carnivore or paleo, um, none of us are getting the medicinal amounts of chlorophyll that we need to enjoy better health. And the easiest, fastest way to do that is with the chlorella algae, which has 400 times more chlorophyll than arugula, um, uh, 25 times more than even um, liquid chlorophyll. And I get these numbers from the Linus Pauling Institute. So they're, you know, they're you know, well re researched, researched, documented amounts of chlorophyll. So that's number one is chlorella has the highest chlorophyll in the world. Um, chlorophyll has been used for centuries for, as I mentioned, um, building health and it's alkaline and very cleansing. Um, it's been used for, uh, it's also stimulates peristalsis. So a lot of people, well, so does chlorella overall, people who are on a keto diet uh, or often if you're you know, on a diet period, um, and as you get older, you have um, uh, you know, difficulty very often with bowel movement. So this, this certainly um, helps with that. The other amazing thing about chlorella is it has the hardest cell wall in the plant kingdom. I mentioned earlier that spirulina has no hard cellulose wall. 
cell. So what's the amazing thing about that hard cell wall is it attaches to toxins. Um, it can be any toxin, um, all the heavy metals, lead, mercury, radiation, aluminum, which of course is in vaccines. Uh, ironically, it identifies alcohol as a toxin. So it removes um, alcohol from your bloodstream in an hour and a half. <laughs> You'll be stone sober and never have a hangover. Really? Um, oh, yep. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it takes an hour and a half because um, it's about an hour and a half for your, to cleanse your blood because your blood is fluid. Uh, it's about a week to 10 days for your cells and about four to six months for your organs. And it's all based on the density of your cells. The more dense they get, the longer it takes to, to pull out toxins. Um, and even folks like Dr. Klinghard is a big, uh, he's a, um, a homeopath up in Seattle area has been promoting chlorella for 30, 40 years. He's originally from Germany. Um, chlorella has been endorsed even by groups like United Nations. They used it at Chernobyl to pull out radiation. Um, if people remember the Fukushima disaster from eight or nine years ago, the entire global supply of chlorella was bought up within 24 hours because everybody in Asia knows that chlorella is the only thing that will remove radiation. Um, wow. So, yeah. and, and I, there is I, a plan. I, I, that's a crazy story that yeah, the whole yeah. global supply of it was bought up. That's, yeah. I had no idea. We had no product. We, you know, it's a plant. So once yeah. it was bought up, you, you have to wait for the plant to grow. So it's another right. month to grow and two weeks to dry and then two or three weeks to ship over here. And, you know, so everybody was out of stock for of chlorella for, you know, a couple of months. It was, mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was an awakening, trust me. <laughs> so, um, and even quite honestly, right now it's, a, it's becoming problematic because, um, there's so many shipping issues. Uh, you're not too far from Long Beach. And um, between COVID and, you know, just people not working, um, the, the ports are so backed up that um, it's becoming very difficult to get the supply of, because ours is grown in, in uh, Taiwan. Most, as I mentioned, almost everything's in Asia, which is another reason why I want to grow it here to get rid of these supply chain problems. But anyways, back to the um, benefits of the hard cell wall, it pulls out anything. But you need to take enough of it, you know, just like spirulina, you could take five or 10 tablets a day to in increase your energy, fill your nutritional gaps. Um, same with the chlorella, you could take five or 10 a day for your wellness needs and your immune system needs. Um, but if you want the detox benefits, um, you do need, you know, closer to 15, preferably 20 or 30 tablets a day, um, because it, it won't have enough power to pull and remove the toxins it'll start it, it can't pull them out without enough to attach to and this has been documented um so a lot of people you know fortunately chlorella tastes darn good especially when you eat it with sea salt or as i mentioned pistachios so um and because when you sleep your body goes through a detox and repair cycle and we're going to talk about more about why chlorella is a um a repair and wealth or health um algae we generally recommend people take it at night you can take it any time of day but when you're sleeping that's when your brain shrinks and your lymphatic system cleans out your brain and if you have chlorella it will help pull aluminum and anything else that's in your brain it will pull out toxins from your brain it will help um, any kind of repair in your body so the best time is to take it at night so that you get all of those benefits um, the other nutrients that are wellness oriented in uh, chlorella algae is it has the highest concentration of rna and dna in the world and as you age you know that becomes damaged and contributes to aging they used to think sardines had the most rna and dna but nope Chlorella has, has more. Um, chlorella also has a nutrient that most people are deficient in called the vitamin K2. I'm not sure if your community knows vitamin K2, but um, it's virtually non-existent in our food supply because um, it only really the only foods that have it are uh, animal fed, uh, grass fed animal protein or um, a dish called natto, which is a Japanese dish most people don't eat. And then the algae chlorella has twice as much K2 as spirulina. What's so important about K2? It moves excess calcium from soft tissue into your blood vessels or into your bones. The, and so what a soft tissue is are things like your blood vessels. Uh, a lot of our, um, heart disease, are really, which you know, they refer to arteriosclerosis, is the hardening of the arteries. And what's hardening is the calcium. Mm -hmm. um, other things that harden, uh, kidney stones, it's calcium. A um, lot of brain issues, it's related to calcification of the brain. Uh, wrinkles, 
it's not just the um, oxidation that's causing the, you know, it's attacking the collagen and the elastin, it's calcium. So this K2 nutrient moves all of that into your bones, which also helps prevent osteoporosis. Um, now, the reason why there's no K2 in our diet, now, if you know anything about K2, it's, it's related to K1. K1 is in anything that's green, but animals have a bacteria in their gut that can convert the K1 to K2 and humans do not. So in the happy days, uh, back in the 60s, um, the animals were grazing on grass. And so uh, as they ate the grass, their body would convert the K1 into K2. And then as we ate the animal protein, we were getting K2 into our diet. And then in the 70s, the farmers realized that if they moved all the cattle off the grazing pastures into enclosures and fed them corn, uh, it would allow them to get fat faster. And that's what they did. And overnight, the supply of K2 in our food supply disappeared. And they've looked at the analysis and growth of heart disease, and it mimics the exact timeline of when that occurred. Uh, now you can buy K2 uh, supplements. They're made from um, fermented chickpeas, but uh, K2 is a very complex vitamin. There's all these different M's, M1, M2, M4, and the only kind of uh, version of K2 that can also penetrate not just your cells, but your brain is one called M4. And that is found in only in the food based um, uh, sources of K2, which are the grass fed. It's, it's MK4, right? MK4, yes. Okay. Um, so it's in the algae and it's in the grass fed um, uh, animal protein. But it, the, the other versions that are made from for, that you buy as a supplement tend not to have the MK4 in it. It's another version. So they're, they're, it's complicated. But anyways, the bottom line is it's in the algae. <laughs> so, uh, and, the, and you know, between the high chlorophyll, the pulling out the toxins, the high DNA and RNA. Oh, and I forgot to mention that it also has um, something, a, a, a nutrient, they didn't know what to call it. So they called it chlorella growth factor. And what it does is it speeds up the growth of your cells uh, four times faster than anything else. And chlorella happens to also be the fastest growing organism in the world. And it's used in all the bio um, uh, tech kind of research for biofuels. So, so it speeds up your healthy cells, not your bad cells, has the chlorophyll, has the RNA and DNA, um, has the K2, has highest concentration of tryptophan, I mean, seriously, this is like a rock star and, and yet it tastes pretty good and it's a great little snack and it's still got 60% protein and 40 vitamins and minerals. So, um, I'm in love, as you can tell with, with chlorella. I mean, I love spirulina too, but, um, we're so surrounded by toxins and it's not just the exogenous toxins, the chemicals, the pollution, the fumes from our carpet and clothes. I learned recently, I was stunned when I read this, that every single day, 30 trillion cells in our bodies die because our bodies are constantly regenerating, right? But 30 trillion, mm -hmm. whoa, and dead cells are toxic cells. And if you do not get rid of them, they, claim, they, they gather in your lymphatic system, they attract bacteria, they start to become acidic, the oxygenation reduces, the mitochondria get damaged. It's just a slippery slope. So yeah. um, it's so we don't live in a bubble anyways, but you've got to protect yourself from what's going on from metabolic processes inside, not just from the things that are exogenous. So, so there you go. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. So I want to get geeky here for a moment. Okay. Uh, I know that you said you've read my book on red light therapy and near infrared light therapy. There was one thing I talk about in that book that is, um, from based on a study from 2014. Still I know exactly which one you're talking. <laughs> yes, yeah, good. Um, but is very interesting, extremely. Yes. I mean, it, it's, it's absolutely extraordinary. Uh, and that is that there's research showing that certain metabolites of chlorophyll can accumulate in our cells, in mammalian cells, I should say, just to speak to without uh, inserting my own speculation. Uh, but it, it's been shown that it can accumulate in mammalian cells, the cells of mammals, and uh, that light, and it's specifically red light, light in the red light and near infrared light part of the spectrum, yes. that can interact with that, those chlorophyll metabolites in a way that um, facilitates the recycling of coenzyme Q, 
which is a slow step in the process of mitochondrial energy generation. Right. And in, in other words, to simplify that for people who, who don't know any biochemistry, basically light photons can help your mitochondria, your cellular energy generators, produce more energy uh, more efficiently. And there's a number of studies that have shown that clearly. But one of the mechanisms of how they do that seems to be, again, inserting some bit of speculation here, but it is very likely that metabolites of chlorophyll are facilitating some of that energy production uh, that, that comes from light exposure, from red and near infrared light exposure. So um, given that these compounds that spirulina and, chlor and chlorella especially are so rich in chlorophyll, uh, there is a good possibility that they are, they are sort of, I guess it wouldn't be directly, but indirectly facilitating uh, increased yeah. energy production from yeah. your cells yeah. and, may, and, and the benefits may be amplified by pairing it with red light therapy. Exactly. Well, and I am glad you brought that up because I studied that. So it's called the electron transport chain. That's the cycle. And, and, it, and it basically does recycle the CoQ10 molecule, which is an important part of the transition um, or the process to generate um, energy because when, because there are, um, I have to go, I, have to, I should have the paper in front of me, but um, there's two form, there's um, co, co um, it's ubiquinone and ubiquinone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it converts um, because it goes becomes oxidated in the process, and then the, what happens is the chlorophyll and the light um, donate an, a, an oxygen molecule back to bring it back to alkaline. So then it just keeps circling around. So it's it's pretty cool, um, and so uh, and it it makes sense to me because I know we used to get all these testimonials from runners. Uh, about how much energy they got from the, the spirulina and heck they're outside, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, any sport or any activity outside um, or red light therapy, even better because it's, you can get it consistently. You take some of the algae before your treatment, you'll get all the other um, benefits because one of which, one of the benefits of red light, as you know, is that it starts to heal the mitochondria because as you age your mitochondria become damaged and they and die um so the algae gives you helps improve the health of your mitochondria and it helps generate more energy and mm -hmm. uh, it's it's pretty remarkable to me um it's it's fascinating and then we work, we're working a lot now with the um uh um cryotherapy community. And I've done some deep dives in that too, because we're finding that the benefits from cryotherapy are also up-leveled from algae. And, and here's mm -hmm. why. So people who aren't familiar with cryotherapy, when you go into this in, in little capsule, uh, with very cold and it brings your body temperature down, you know, for about three minutes. Now, when that happens, your body automatically pulls all the blood to its core, uh, cause it thinks it's dying. And so in your blood are all these nutrients. And so it's healing, you know, maybe organs or your brain, well, it's not your brain cause your head's not in there, but it's bringing all this rich blood flow to areas that might not have it otherwise. And then when you step out it, all that blood flow rushes back to your, your, um, you know, hands and feet. And, and it gives you this, this buzz of, of energy because of all the oxygen and, and the rush. Well, the spirulina particularly is a vasodilator. So when it facilitates an even better pull of the blood into the core, number one, and it's so rich in nutrients and particularly if you take the chlorella beforehand too, because as you get out of the cryotherapy treatment and the blood flows back out, all the um, toxins that have been released in that process can be pulled out by the chlor chlorella. Um, and it will give you all additional healing benefits from the chlorophyll and all the whatever. So it completely up levels cryotherapy and red light therapy. If you take it beforehand, it's probably, you know, certainly for the cryotherapy, it's probably good to take it after as well. But mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm hoping to work with some of the um, the, certainly the red light therapy community, and we're, we're already starting to work with the cryotherapy community a lot. Um, so, it, cause that's, very, that's growing very quickly. So it's, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> Wonderful. Great stuff, Catherine. So, um, let me ask you this, getting more practical now. Uh, there are a number of 
concerns around chlorella and spirulina as far as manufacturing processes. Uh -huh. um, and, and one other concern. So I think there's, there's three things I want to mention here and get your feedback on. Um, one is uh, with, with thyroid issues and hypothyroidism and autoimmune hypothyroidism in particular, Hashimoto's, there is a concern over too much iodine intake. And I've seen a number of practitioners uh, who specialize in that area uh, actually advising against all algae consumption, including spirulina and chlorella. Now, this seems to be, from what I can tell, greatly misguided. There, there, there doesn't seem to be any research showing that these are a problem. And it seems to be, I think, just based on the presumption that all algaes have lots yeah. and lots of iodine, like, like yeah. I think lumping it in with seaweed, yeah. and therefore that it would be a concern to get too much iodine. So yeah. um, that's that's the first one. I'll let you respond yeah. to that. Okay. And then move on well, to thank you for raising that because part of what I um, why I'm doing what I'm doing is because there is so much misinformation out there, and nobody has taken the time to explain um, the reasons for um, that are contrary. The, the, you know, to stop the misinformation. So here's the reality. Sure, there's iodine in the algae if it came from the ocean, but the two that 99% of the algae that you buy in stores or from us, spirulina and chlorella, have no iodine. We do third party lab tests. We have no iodine in our algae. Yes, it's in seaweed. Remember, I said it was part of the algae community, but there is zero iodine in spirulina and chlorella, certainly ours. Yeah. I wish there was because I take iodine drops occasionally myself just because you know, I want to be sure I'm, and I, I put it on my skin so I absorb it at you know whatever, but there is no iodine. So that problem goes away. And if anyone wants our lab tests, I'm happy to send them to you because they're done by a third party FDA approved lab. We have no control over them at all. They just measure what's there and measure what's not or they can't measure what's not. And, and there is no iodine in our <laughs> algae. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So that's one. Uh, the other concern is with toxins and, and contamination. So there's some concern around, um, you know, getting chlorella or spirulina that comes from China in particular. Yeah. And maybe there's a few other places, sources that it could come from that are concerned. And I know that there are certain, uh, certain countries, let's say Japan, Taiwan, maybe Korea, where uh, they're I, uh, my understanding is that they are much, much less toxic and they're, they're very clean. So yeah. can you differentiate between clean sources versus bad sources? Sure. Well, um, you know, uh, Taiwan is world renowned for having the highest quality, but, uh, and I would definitely stay away from anything in China, but even within Taiwan, um, you still have to, you, it's still the individual company that's growing the, the, the algae. So, I mean, there's some good algae coming out of, out of India now, for example. So the, the way to find out if there's toxins is to test for it. Um, I'm very proud that we grow ours very carefully, triple filtered water. We have lab tests that are provided to us by the growers, but I know because we sell ours through doctors nationwide, naturopaths, cryo, cryo, um, chiro chiropractors, they need and believe only documentation that is um, from the US from a FDA um, approved source. So that's what we use for our testing. So not only do we test for toxins of which we have none, we also test for all the nutrients so the so they can see that we're not faking anything at all. And then I've, it took me two years to find this, but because um, uh, Dominique D'Agostino had asked me about this about four years ago about micro microtoxins, and those need to be um, tested from a very special lab. It took me two years to find a lab, but I found one, and we test for those too. And again, we don't have any because. They are grown, our algae is grown in the very carefully controlled freshwater environment. Yes, there will be mycotoxins in algae that grows in lakes or oceans because they exist in those environments. Um, and there are a couple of um, scientific documents circulating um, about testing spirulina and chlorella and finding mycotoxins. And, I, and I've read through, I have combed through those 
research papers and the source was Klamath Lake. And, and then there were other research that found out that Klamath Lake was toxic. Oh, no surprise that the algae was toxic. So just be careful not to make huge assumptions. It's like, you know, going to a swamp, a swamp, you know, with toxic water and saying and declaring, I'm not going to drink water anymore because that swamp <laughs> water is toxic. So yeah. don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Check your sources, ask for information. Um, and, you know, there are good suppliers out there, just like any in any industry. There's some good ones and not so good ones. <laughs> Got it. My, my last question to you is specific to chlorella. Um, you brought up that chlorella has, I think, the thickest cell yep. wall or, or hardest Hard. cell yes. wall. Yes. Um, and in order for it to be digestible and for us to get the full benefits of it, my understanding is the chlorella has to go through some process to either, you know, under pressure, crack the cell wall, or I think that there's another, another process. I think I remember reading about one in Korea that has really thin cell walls that isn't cracked or something like that. I think my understanding is there's a couple different processes that yeah. are used. Yes. Can you, can you describe that and what, what sure. is optimal? Yeah. Um, well, the original chlorella company is called Sun Chlorella, and I'm very grateful for them because they're about 50, 60 years old, and they spent 10 years figuring out how to grow chlorella. It's a very complex plant to grow. Um, and they also are the ones that discovered that you had to crack the cell wall in order for your body to be able to absorb all the rich nutrition that's in there. So that being said, I'm very grateful for them doing that. But, um, and the technique, and then when started, other companies started growing chlorella, they used the technique that Sun Chlorella developed, which is called Dynomill, which is to crack the cell wall with, by tumbling it with glass beads. Mm -hmm. But then research um, was done and discovered that as the glass heats up, lead from the glass leaks into the chlorella. Um, so, which they denied, but then the state of California tested it and blah, blah, blah. So uh, this knowledge um, came to me as I was forming the company and I said, well, that's not going to work for me. There's got to be another way to crack the chlorella. And there was, there was a new technique that we use. And I'm, I'm sure there's probably a few other companies that may as well. I don't know um, where we pass the chlorella through a, um, a sound, basically a sound chamber. And it's the vibrations that are cracking the cell wall. So there's no heat, no lead. Um, and the other sad thing about the heat is that of course it causes some deterioration of the nutrition, but most importantly is there's no lead. Um, someone said to me, oh, your chlorella has got good vibrations <laughs> yeah very 60s <laughs> so um i'm very proud of that and and uh, we've had a lot of people do muscle testing on our chlorella it passes the test every time if any of you are interested you know uh, some people there are a very few not many but occasionally someone who cannot tolerate chlorella um it just is what it is it's just like some people have a peanut allergy spirulina sure. can universally be used by just about anybody but if you ever have any doubt um there's this technique called muscle testing and you just you know hold up the item that uh, you are intending to eat and someone will try to press your arm down and if your arm goes down quickly, uh, it means that your body intuitively knows that that's not good for you. Uh, and if your arm holds steady, then that means that it is good for you because it's, it's, your, your strength is there. So if you ever have any doubt, it's a very simple task. A test costs you nothing. Uh, you can do it with any food. But, um, and that's why also while on our website, we tend to sell our bags large bags of a thousand tablets. Uh, we do offer a sample pack and we do sell um, smaller pouches. They're, we call them travel pouches with 30 tablets on Amazon. They're only $5 each. So if you have any doubt at all, um, I would just encourage people to go to Amazon, spend $5 or $10. You know, there's the 30 tablets. If you take five a day, the last six days, if you take, you know, 10 a day, the last two, three. So it's, it's a good value. <laughs> and then come back to the website. We actually have a um, 20 percent discount code energy blueprint for your community thank you um, very much for doing that <laughs> so when you come back to our website use the energy blueprint in the discount box it works all the time on everything no rush no don't so don't panic <laughs> um, and then you'll enjoy 20 percent off what you what you purchase but but yeah the, um it's you know i'm proud of the fact that i took a lot of care uh, along the way we our packaging is uv protected it's it's eco-friendly sustainable made from you know re recyclable paper and our canisters are paper this is new um so that you can shake out the tablets 
So, um, but it's because I really, honestly, wasn't planning on building a company. I just started this to help my sister. And then I thought, well, I can help a few more people and then I can help a few more. And, and I just kept going and uh, here I am <laughs> 12 years later. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, so I, want, I wanted to show you just a couple of things. Um, as I mentioned before, there's so much nutrition in each one of these tablets that the equivalent of that much that many vegetables is in each one of those tablets. So as I mentioned, you know, I did this because I found people weren't eating vegetables because it was too much work or they had digestive issues. So problem solved, you know, your kids, you know, never fight with your kids again, just give them a couple of those a day or spirulina yeah. before their soccer game instead of a, you know, one of those bars. Um, yeah. Again, this is unprocessed food. Part of the problem with our food supply is so much of it is processed. It's also mm -hmm. the fact that there's got canola oil and sugar, but it's the processing. This is a raw food and, and you don't have to ever have to worry about that. And it never goes bad. We put a expiry date on our bag. It's usually three years, but algae is the strangest thing. It never dies. When, it, when any other plant, when the growing conditions deteriorate, tomatoes, corn, doesn't matter what it is, they die, right? Not algae. It will go dormant indefinitely until the growing conditions return again. And a short antidote on that is I read about a National Geographic team that went up to the Antarctic and they chipped away some ice for whatever reason. They found some algae attached to it. So they took it to the lab and um, uh, put some water, uh, put the algae in a petri dish and some water and darn things started growing again so yeah. i mentioned that and, that, and that was that was what thousands of years old yeah, it was it, they found they carbon dated it and found it was like three billion years old or two billion years <laughs> old it was a national geographic i don't have the source but you can probably google yeah, it. I, re I remember reading about that um so but it, uh, the same thing happens you know we have pe people called preppers who buy you know 20 bags at a time because it never goes bad you know i hope that when we're bigger we can airlift this stuff uh, to disaster areas to places around the world where they don't have any food. I mean, I have a much bigger vision about what I want to do with algae than just growing a company. And we want to start an algae academy so people can get certified in algae education and set a foundation up where people can, um, where we can donate either the algae or just help people grow it in other parts of the country. I mean, it's, it's, it is truly a foundational food and a gift to us from mother nature. It's just hasn't been explained properly. So, yes. um, uh, and, you know, with that being said, you know, as I mentioned on our website, there's, we sell our algae in large bags and I don't want people to have sugar sticker shock because a bag is $120 with your discount code, it brings it to 96. But I have this quote from NASA that says one gram of algae has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of fruits and vegetables. So I did the math and I figured out that the nutrition, not the fiber, but the nutrition in a bag of our algae has is equal to 551 pounds of vegetables. Now at $3 a pound, that works out to about $1,500. And think about it, that's 551 pounds of vegetables you didn't have to carry home, clean, cook, or eat. So that's why I, I call it two things. One, I call it e efficient nutrition. And I also call it intelligent food because you have to be intelligent to take it, <laughs> number one. And it knows what to do in your body. It's an adaptogen, nutrient dense, um, never toxic. If you don't need the nutrient, you just don't absorb it. Um, but it's food. It's critical that people understand algae is food, <laughs> not a supplement. Um, so, uh, so it's, and we're only just beginning. It's taken me 12 years to get to the starting race of the race because uh, um, you know you probably think I'm a little you know overexcited and I have to admit I get pretty excited about algae but I'm not alone uh, you know the company called Gore-Tex it's a it's a outdoor clothing company about a year ago they launched an entire clothing line all made of algae because it's the most sustainable crop in the world. Uh, Reebok here in Boston two years ago launched a running shoe completely made of plants and the liner oh was made of algae because algae kills bacteria. In fact, you probably don't know this, but every single water treatment plant in America uses algae to kill bacteria. That's what that little bit of green is in the water, if you ever noticed. Wow, that's, I didn't know that. That's algae, yeah, yeah. It's also Unilever just invested in a company in England who's making water bottles and condiment materials out of algae because you can eat your bottle after you drink your water or it will... <laughs> or it will um, decompose in 24 hours. I, uh, I always eat 
my bottle after drinking <laughs> the, the water, but I find that the plastic hurts on on the way out. <laughs> I don't and then, and then d- you don't get me started on the glass bottles or the metal ones, even worse. <laughs> Well, I always knew you you had a sharp intellect, but now I know it's it's because of the sharp mo- molecules in glass. <laughs> but anyways, so, there's there's a lot going on in algae and and it just hasn't quite made its way to the to the public domain or public awareness, but it's coming. Let me tell you, it's, it's going to be way bigger than CBD. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Well, then maybe I have to start that aquaculture slash yeah. algae farm. Yeah, I'll, I'll help. we'll we'll do one together. <laughs> yes, I, I would actually, in all seriousness, I would be interested in exploring that with you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I'm going to be growing. It'll have to be probably. I need a parallel um, environment that's similar to where Taiwan is because Taiwan has the best algae. So it's probably like, sub, like subtropical climate. Well, so yeah. So it's uh, I've identified either northern Texas or northern um, Florida. But there's so much that has to be done. I'm not an expert in growing algae, but I will, I will, I will find somebody who is. And uh, it might be five to ten years, but it's definitely going to happen. Because well, like I said, I, I have quite a bit of background in that. Because, okay, well, there's and I mean, you know, the, in, the, the, mo- the most advanced form of aquarium keeping is live coral reef aquariums, and um, and I got to a very high level of doing that. So I yeah. I have a lot of experience in that yeah. world, and I yeah. would imagine that growing algae. Uh, is much less complex actually than well than it coral actually reef is, yeah it's pretty complex but it, it it is a specialty and I do have people I have people yeah. but um, I'm not sure if you know but there's a big I can't remember the name right now but there's a big um, surfboard company in in San Diego and their uh-huh. boards are made of algae so, yeah and there's a lot of algae research actually in San Diego and also in Arizona Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, you know, like I say, it's coming, I'm just still ahead of my time, but, um, it's very exciting to be part of the solution for our world. Uh, yes. we didn't even talk about the sustainability issues, um, uh, which I'm very proud of algae for. And if anyone hasn't yet seen this Netflix movie, Sea Spiracy, please watch it. It's, uh, they even do a shout out to algae twice in the movie as the answer, because, um, you know, a lot of overfishing is because uh, of the fish people getting the fish oil for the omega-3 and i remind people as they did where do you think the fish get the omega-3 from they get it from algae so um go to the source cut out the middleman and uh um, you'll be much safer and so will the ocean so it's Wonderful. kind of fun. <laughs> so Catherine, thank you so much for coming on the show this was a lot of fun thank you and, thank uh, you thank so you for much. the work you're doing and can hardly wait to for... build our algae farm together <laughs> Indeed, yes <laughs> So let people know where uh, what 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 your website is called, and then the discount code that gives them twenty percent off. You're going to do one for me. It's Energy Blueprint, right? Is that yes. all one word or two yes. words? It's all one word, and okay. it's Energy Bits. E N E R G Y B for boy I T S T S dot com. Uh, so that's the main site, and we're very active on social. Our handle is um, at Energy Bits on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We have a separate handle for Beauty Bits, very girly, uh, at, which is at Beauty Bits. But the main action is over at Beauty at Energy Bits. And as <laughs> I, I love that it's the same product. Just, just more well, pinkified and with a different name yeah. for, the, for the women. And I wasn't trying to trick anybody. You know, a little segue is that I used to be, as you mentioned, a publisher. And people may not know this, but almost every major certainly in the fashion magazine, there's always two covers. There's the one that you see at the newsstand and there's a completely different cover that's sent to the subscribers. And that allows the magazine to cut two deals with uh, two separate fashion houses for Mm -hmm. featuring, and uh, it's usually the same model, but it's a whole different, uh, you know, look. So, um, knowing that that's you know that already occurs in different industries and heck you know different colors for different cars appeal to different people um mm-hmm. i just wanted to help people because i can't help them get healthy if i can't get the product into their body and the, for the first step is to feel um connected to the brand and what it's speaking to you and by the way i design all the packaging uh, i do it i've taught myself package design and all of the packaging is my homage to mother nature. So nice. this, this is a leaf, you know, obviously a flower and energy bits is the, you know, the late, the, the water. So um, I'm just, I have a lot of 
Um, Mother Nature is my mentor. And if, you know, if people have asked me, you know, who, who, who do I look to for help and guidance? I, 100% of the time I say Mother Nature. She's, she's there for us. Beautiful. <laughs> <Good analogy. laughs> yes. Catherine, uh, thank you so much for your work. Uh, this was this was great, and I suspect that a lot of people are going to go out and get some energy bits and recovery bits, or for the ladies, the beauty, beauty bits. bits. <laughs> so right. thank you so much. I look forward to talking to you again very soon. All right, let's stay in touch. All right, we'll send you some more product too, including some beauty bits. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, bye. Hey there, this is Ari again. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you found it valuable, please share it with your friends, share it with your family, help me get the word out there. Also, if you're on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell to get notifications every time we release a new video or new episode of the podcast. And if you're listening to this, make sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or on your favorite podcast. Thanks so much for supporting my work at the Energy Blueprint. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you in the next.